right, we've reached the last section of the show, and we are going to talk about where do we think the city needs to go. And we are at the Starbucks on Frederick Street. Come on by, have a cup of coffee, come watch us uh, do our thing. I mean, it's a really nice breeze out here. It finally cooled off. Beautiful, beautiful uh, sky, other than all the smog and stuff from all the trucks. Uh, Back in the day when I was a kid, it was beautiful out here. It was beautiful. But other than that, uh, come sit with us and watch the trucks go up and down Frederick Street, which is not a uh, truck route. But, hey, they don't care because we have no regulation. So, again, uh, Sean, we, we keep talking about the same old stuff. And rare houses this, this is that. Daryl Terrell uh, came up eight years ago, uh, back in 2008, he introduced Hire Moval. Uh, it seems like every business that we bring in, another business folds, and so on, so on, so forth. So, what direction should we go other than warehouse? Because I think we should have a moratorium on warehouses and start focusing on something else. Yeah. Firstly, I would love to see some light manufacturing, but I wouldn't bank on that because, like I just mentioned earlier in the show, uh, they were discussing that 31 years ago and it still hasn't materialized. Um, and we shouldn't uh, bank on having all, all this land either because if you look at like uh, Chino, Ontario, and some of the other cities around here that used to have very large open stretches of land, all that's gone now. And um, well, eventually our land is going, our, our developable land is going to be used up. Right, it's going to be developed. Yeah, right now what we have going for us is actually the, the, the open land in our sphere of interest that's going to be a lot harder to develop mm-hmm. in the hilled areas. And um, so if we could make use of, like, recreational activities, like I mentioned before, there's uh, hiking, camping, equestrian, um, uh, shooting and hunting, uh, might even be some room for uh, light sport aircraft. Um, I don't know if they're, I don't think the Air Force Police would like uh, ultralights that much. Oh, no, but they could always go down by the parachuting thing in Paris and extend over there. Yeah. And, um... Like you talked about, like maybe like RC cars or planes. There's 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 a lot of hobbies that are actually get quite expensive fast, and we have uh, the natural resources around us to make use of uh, you know, recreational like uh, recreational industries. Right, right. Um, you know, I had an idea of. Uh you know, I mean, these kids are in the high-tech stuff, whatever the deal is. Why can't we attract a Google? Why can't we attract a Microsoft? I mean, they have them in Santa Ana, you know? I think uh, I think the competent companies just look at the city council and just, uh, uh, we're not getting mixed up in that. Yeah, you, you know, and, and, and I, I, I think that is our Achilles heel because they see what's going on out here. They see the same clowns doing the same things, and they're saying, you know what? It's too much of a headache to even come out there and even give these people a chance. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm open to going to business for myself someday, and I, I consider uh, setting up business here because, like I've said a few minutes ago, this is home for me. And But uh, if I was from living somewhere else, I mean, it would have to be a pretty bad neighborhood for me to consider uh, setting up business here. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, you know, and if the, the, those of you guys listening and you guys have ideas and you want to talk about those ideas, we invite you to come on the show because people want to hear other things. And when we heard that WLC presentation, everybody saw that presentation. Everybody heard it a hundred times. Notice that there was no opposition presentation because it wasn't allowed. And I, I just have a feeling and I know that if the opposition had a chance to present something, it would have get opened a lot of people's minds to the ramifications of what this WLC would have done. Yeah, it's a very, uh, it's a very efficient psychological effect to bring in people and build a bandwagon to and keep repeating things until you feel like uh, you're uh, the only one against the or against something and you can make you feel like you're wrong. It's very, uh, it's a very tried, tried and true uh, tactic. It's works very well, but um, the truth of the matter is, those of us that want some type of, want some want to see something new, uh, we need to start showing up to the city council more often, uh, otherwise we're, there's going to be the, the the bandwagon people that um, make everything sound like awesome. Make right, and, and you know, and, and, and because they have numbers, it makes it look like it's overwhelmingly in support, when it yeah. probably isn't. And uh, back in the, when the big dispute over the World uh, Logistics Center. Um, Ito was having these uh, food drives, and well, does he do that anymore? I haven't heard anything about you know, that. And, no, you know, 
Actually, I called Ido when I well, he called me when I was out at my son's graduation, and I had mentioned to him. I said, "Hey, what happened to the the tri-tip dinners and stuff?" Because now that all these wars are over, I was hoping to go over there and get me a couple of plates. You know, I mean, you know, I'm a single guy. Nobody's cooking for me, so all of a sudden it stopped. You know, but you know, Christmas and stuff is coming. So let's see if he's going to give us that butterball turkey. Yeah. How about that? Uh, so basically, this guy is willing to make you some people that are a lot of these biker types that showed up to the meetings are they're basically loyal to their stomach. I mean. Right. Uh, if we had a better food drive, they, they would have came in support of opposition, opposition for it. They, 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 were, they just wanted the food. Yeah, well, you know, it's like what you saw after the WLC passed. You didn't see anybody at council, and you still don't see anybody at council. Yeah. It's like, you know, where'd they go? Around the corner? You don't yeah. see them. So, so I, I, I want everyone to wonder, uh, okay, if he did that to these vulnerable people that only care about putting food in their stomach, once you get it, how, 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 why is he, how, we really expect him to do anything else for the rest of us? Is it, we really expect he's going to, like, come through and, like, be this messianic figure? Like, he, like, well, remember, you know, he, you know, he was sent here by God, according to, uh, the street pastor, I forgot his name, but, you know, I, I know him in passing, and, um, you know, uh, I, I want to give a quick, quick, uh, notification. If you guys are watching in the sky and you see something very unusual, that 163rd Air Reconnaissance Wing is bringing their uh, Raptors and Predators and their UAVs down from Victorville, which is the old Georgia Air Force Base. We're going to be uh, bedding them down here at Marsh Air Reserve Base. Now, if we keep encroaching on that base with that idiot cement guy in Paris that put up that high thing right into the uh, approach... Yeah, the, well, no, it isn't Robertson, but it's another guy on the other side by Paris. Uh, the Air Force is going to say, you know what, it's not worth it, and we're going to pull out of here. And I'm going to tell you this. If, for those of you who don't know, that base is the biggest employer in Moreno Valley. Now, when it was an active duty base in the 90s before it closed, that base pumped in almost 25 to 35 million extra local dollars. Yeah, and it was also the major theme through the city that's... Um like the old McDonald's used to have a Air Force theme. Uh, there was the Midland uh, Thunderbirds right. for the Midland uh, Elementary School, and there were a bunch of things like that right. where they showed pride in the Air Force Base, and that was a major um, selling point. And we don't have that. It'd be nice to make to get to have the, have the something going on in the base for us. Again. Oh yeah, well, like, like I said, if, if, if I get to council with my military background, I'm definitely going to uh, talk to General Muncie and make sure that we have a. Uh, good rapport with our historic base because anybody that was anybody in the Air Force commanded at that base myself included <laughs> yeah. so you know so so for everybody listening if you see something very unusual in the sky it is probably a UAV um, they're going to be bedded down here so don't get alarmed and uh, since we're wrapping up uh, I wanted to mention that the last Sunday I had a sit down conversation with uh, the school board candidate um, George Schultz. Okay. And, uh, I was extremely impressed. He knows his stuff. He knows that he's he's basically uh, working as an arbitrator. He's, he's not. Uh, I know Evan Morgan's like got this. Like I'm gonna do this and this and this. Like he's the command dictator. That's not what the job is about. And George Schultz understands that. He's been around, and I was for a while now, and uh, I was really impressed with his statesmanship. I mean. Credentials. Good credentials, uh, good ideas. They're really so you can uh, analyze them and make a decision. And I think he's, by, he's definitely hands down the candidate in that district. 
in, in that area, exactly, in, in, exactly. Um, uh, we, we did talk to, to to Evan Morgan, and he gave us some of his ideas last night at council. You know, of course, uh, he kind of gave he gave us a little explanation. So we are giving all the candidates, all the candidates, a truce. If you want to reset your campaign and set the story straight, so we don't have to fact check you, so you know, so you can unspin this. You're welcome to come on the show and do so. But if you're going to continue to lie and throw stuff out there, we're just going to set the record straight so that people can decide for themselves. Okay, though, for me personally, don't expect, I'm not going to give Victoria Baca any slack. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to that right now. Okay, okay. Um, you know, and, and, that, and that's the thing you guys also got to remember. Sean Fortin, he lives in District 2. So he doesn't have a dog in the fight. He can't vote for Victoria Baca, nor does it really matter to him gets elected over here and he's not a political person in the aspect of whatever it's just a personal thing i guess between them just like it is between me and uh denise johnny come lately fleming we both live in the same district now she can vote for me and i can vote for her because we're, we're in two different races but do you actually think that's going to happen nope but she's always welcome to come on the show i'll let her just go ahead and spin her web of intrigue and uh like I said, I'm trying to be as fair as I can. Hey, she's running for mayor. Will I vote for her? Absolutely not. But you know, if anybody else wants to vote for her, and she, you know, and she wins, congratulations. Like I uh, last night, I said to all the candidates in all the elections, good luck, and you know, do the best you can. But run an honest and open campaign, and that's the best that we can ask you to do. So, I mean, you know, with that said, uh, is there anything else coming down uh, during the week? Uh, there's going to be a candidate form on the 26th. We'll get you the information on that. Um, I'm not sure about the school board. The school board thing is going to be coming down the pipe, and we're going to announce those things. Yeah, the Moreno Valley Educators Association also has their interviews on the 26th, so I don't think the city... Yeah, the city's not involved with that. But I don't think the school board people would be able to make it here for them. Right, okay. So, you know, we're, we're going to put out candidate information for those guys that are that might be interested. Again, a lot of candidates are going to be coming to the show. So if, you, if you're in uh, traffic and looking behind that big truck and there's one in front of you, one on the side of you, pull out your smartphone. You know, we're going to uh, live broadcast as we can and, and so you can talk to these candidates. Yeah, northbound on the, <laughs> the, the 215 and around coming out of San Diego towards, uh, towards Reno Valley around 2 or 3. That's like a parking lot with trucks. So. Right. I can never seem to get a good chance to get a picture. So if you, if you guys can, that would be great. Right. And I want to give a, a, a quick shout out. In my district, we have Club Status. Club Status has been active for a little over a year now. And recently they have an old school concert coming up if it hasn't happened already. But we're going to start uh, broadcasting Club Status's uh, events for the weekend because I am so sick and tired of people saying there's nothing to do in Moreno Valley. We have a nightclub right here in our town that nobody seems to want to patronize. And the people that do patronize it, I don't, I don't know if it's just a close secret, but we have that. If you like old school 80s music like myself, if you like 90s music, they have all that. They have comedy night, all that stuff. So we're going to start broadcasting local businesses around the city because that's what we're about. I know everybody's like, oh, News from Edgemont is just to get people. No, this is not uh, Moreno Valley Matters and, you know, things like that. I don't care what side of the fence you are. I want to hear your opinion and prove your opinion. That, let's talk. Let's discuss it. Sean hates everybody equally. That's true. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, as much as I hate the World Logistics Center project, there are a few people out there that actually had to, actually are intelligent and actually had a few decent reasons why they, why they consider the project. And uh, if you can come on here and be civilized, then by all means do so. And, 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 and that's how we're, and, and we're going to do it. So everybody be safe this week. And we are going to be back next week. And if something does come up this week and a candidate wants to come on the show, hey, we'll set that up and we'll, we'll meet you and greet you. And uh, let's talk politics, everybody. This has been News from Edgemont, Sean 14, Donovan Sadiq. And I must say, mean Gene Sean 14. We'll see you guys next week. Have a great one.